The Wolves are back on top in the West. Welcome to Wolves Live in our Trio Orthopedic Studio. Kevin Lynch and Rebecca Brunson with us here tonight. I'm Marnie Gellner. We're talking about a very big Timberwolves win and one where the Wolves absolutely dominated the first half and played nearly flawless basketball in the first half. And uh, leading the way over and over again was this connection. Mike Conley and Rudy Gobert, one way or the other, whether it's passing, assisting, you can see the chemistry from those two players. You know, we're so used to talking about the chemistry from the angle of Mike passing to Rudy. But Rudy is one of the best screen assist guys in the league. So they have the, com the combination of Mike being able to play in certain situations and finding the three ball off of that. So you, that was on full display. The comfort that they have, Rudy understanding when to rescreen, and Mike just knowing that he's going to be able to come off of those screens and be able to shoot the three. A lot of times the guy that's guarding Rudy is in drop coverage, so he knows that there's going to be nobody really there. Look at where Jokic is dropped. So there's nobody to really defend except for Reggie Jackson that has to chase over top. And they did that throughout the entire night. And that's the benefit of having a guy, you know, a lot of defenders feel like since Rudy can't shoot the basketball from there, that they're able to sit back in the paint and they want to make sure that they can guard Rudy on the roll. But what they don't uh, take into account is the fact that Mike Conley's a sniper right now. And if you're not up there and you're not guarding him at the point of screen, then he's going to do that all night long. You see he was able to hit five or six from three. You know, he hit the first four, so he had it rolling early. And that's something that the combination between Rudy and Mike is going to give you night in and night out. And, you know, Mike is using that to his advantage. Right there at the top of the key or either in the slots, he's able to get threes from that position. If he's not getting threes there, he's set in the corner. He's able to knock it down from there, too. But the connection between these two, Two. And in some instances, it might be Nas up there as well setting the screen. But Rudy, for the most part, because of the way that teams guard him and the way that they're able to have that massive amount of space for Mike to come off and knock down that three. So it was an impressive night, and that combination has been working all season, really. And you heard Mike Conley before we started the postgame show praise Rudy Gobert in the way that uh, Conley was able to get free for shots, get the looks that he wanted, get those shots off five of six from three tonight. A lot of that because of the screens Conley was getting from Rudy Gobert. Overall, Kevin, it was a very good night for the Timberwolves moving the basketball. They had 19 assists in the first half, finished the game tonight with 28. Yeah, they had 19 in the first half and zero turnovers. That's never happened in a half. Uh, in the in franchise history so the ball was moving that was a great sign that really set the tone really for the rest of the game I thought and it was a variety of guys whether it's Conley with his eight assists in this game or Kyle Anderson coming off the bench with seven Anthony Edwards five assists so it was a variety of guys moving the basketball really one of the best parts to this huge win for this team is how everybody's moving the basketball now granted there's still situations where a guy like Anthony Edwards got to ISO you got to take advantage of that strength that you have but it's contagious guys moving the ball the open player gets the shot and it's not selfish basketball it's not you know exclusively ISO basketball now Minnesota finished with 28 assists in this game so things kind of calmed down a little bit in the second half and Minnesota had nine turnovers in the second half but the tone was set especially in that second quarter when Minnesota had a 19 point lead going into halftime so great win for this team back in first place in the Western Conference and a big part of it how the ball was moving and one of the recipients of that is Jaden McDaniels a week ago a week and a half ago when the Wolves in Denver played at Target Center, McDaniels had 26 points. It tied his season high. Tonight, he had 17. And maybe just as important, 13 at halftime to kind of set a tone for the night he was going to have. Yeah, and you've heard Finch say throughout the season, you're talking about the ball movement, Kevin, that Jaden is a barometer for how well the ball is moving because he's the beneficiary of a lot of those assists, a lot of those shots when he gets things off ball. So just being able to spot up in the corner, that was his one three for the night. But over the past couple games, you know, his three-point field goal attempts has continued to creep up. He just looks so much more comfortable than we've seen him, you know, in this last stretch of 10 over five. He's been being able to be aggressive. Like you said, 26 the last time these two teams met. 17, 70% from the field in this one, 70% 
from the field in that last game as well. So just him being comfortable. And I think that this is a every man needs to step up situation without Cat. And I think that the team is really understanding that when they share the basketball and shoot when they're open, shoot your shot, don't force anything, play to your strengths. And the strength that this Timberwolves team has is Jaden McDaniel spotting up. He's really an underrated creator off of the bounce as well, so he can get into the mid-range, able to float. He's a great cutter off ball, and you see him doing all of those things as of late to be able to create easy offense for this Wolves team. You know, you see things starting to click, and that's what they need. They need everybody involved, and Jaden's a guy that's going to be able to get his shot um, offensively, and then he's locking down on the other end, too. So playing on both ends has been really great as of late. And the Timberwolves as a whole playing well on both ends, and part of that is taking care of the basketball. Uh, Kevin, you talked a little bit about turnovers and the lack thereof in the first half, and when you don't have a lot of turnovers, you don't give the other team yeah. a lot of fast-break opportunities, and that was one of the benefits for the Timberwolves tonight. Yeah, that's how your offense really affects what you do defensively, because if you're sloppy with the basketball, making bad decisions, turning the ball over, all it does is feed what the other team is trying to do, and they're rushing down the court trying to pound it down your throat. And, uh, yeah, you know, Denver committed 13 turnovers in this game. The fast break points, 15 for Minnesota, four only for Denver. Denver. And a lot of that, like I'm saying, the Wolves just did not make a lot of mistakes, especially in the first half. But even in the second half when Minnesota had a pretty big lead. Um, but a big part of this win also is Minnesota attacking Denver. I, I don't know what it seemed. It seemed like Denver a little bit was low on energy in a game like this, which was surprising. I thought they might try to come out and, and really punch Minnesota right off the bat, but they didn't do that. Minnesota got the lead. Then the second quarter, Minnesota extended the lead, and a part of that was Minnesota taking advantage of nugget turnovers and getting out in transition, especially with that smaller lineup that was really successful in the second quarter. And that was a part of this win, too, that doesn't get talked about enough. But, yeah, Denver has been a little sloppy in Minnesota tonight, and then in that game last week as well, and the Wolves have really capitalized. And now the Timberwolves have a 2-1 to one season series lead oh. over the Nuggets. One more game to come in a week and a half back in Denver. But this one was important for so many reasons, and it lived up to the hype. We yeah. built it up, Timberwolves <laughs> fans, and then we watched our team come home with a big victory. Uh, Michael Grady, Jim Peterson in Denver, where it all went down as Minnesota dominated in Denver tonight. Thanks a lot, Marty. You know, I had a conversation with Nas Reed before the game, and I asked him, what's the approach? Are you going to treat this like any other game, or are you going to treat this like your Super Bowl? And he cut me <laughs> off and said, no, Super Bowl. <laughs> we want to win this ball game. We want to get number one in the West. And there is a there is a fire, there is a competitive fire inside of these guys mm. that they're not happy with what they've done to this point. 50 games, not enough. They want number one in the West. And the way that they played in that first half, Jim Pete, was as impressive a first half yeah. as we've seen from this squad. It, it really was. You know, they they defensively they they took it to the. Precious love, the stars spell out. Love longing for our union, then. Love
love my fragrance so captivating You close to me, I lose myself Never thought I would find love like this Never thought I would be waiting Move your body, let your spirit soar And let your atom move your body